Guys, what's up? Nico again here in this 3D Printed Profits episode. I have with us Ryan. Um, Ryan, how do you say your last name, man? Fonticella. Fonticella. Okay, so I was right the first time. Correct. So, Ryan, where are you coming from, bro? Uh, I'm coming from West Palm Beach, Florida, man. Florida. Yeah. The beautiful, beautiful state of Florida. Um, actually, I wanted to <laughs> go to Florida. Florida is a great place. Um. And so, anyway, so we're just going to talk to Ryan about his business, how he got started, how he grows it, so on and so forth. Um, but before we start, I always want to invite everyone to join us in the 3D Printing Side Hustle group. That's where we talk business, chat, um, help each other out, you know, just stuff like that. Um, it's for those who want to start, grow, build, and scale their own 3D printing business. So come join us there, hang out, get some tips, you know. Anyway, um, I think that's it for my notes uh, for the pre-roll. And so let's start the show. Ryan, Welcome. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> Thanks for Hi. having me. Hey, man, thank you for being here. I know it's um, it's it's taking out time when you're busy, busy schedule. So I really appreciate you taking the time and just kind of hanging out. Oh, and, no and worries, chatting. man. It's it's a pleasure to be here, and you know, I'll make the time for somebody as awesome as you. I've yeah. jumped into your uh, your webinars and stuff, man. I, I listened to somewhat of your backstory, and so I I figured, listen, if how, with how much you got on your plate, if you can make time for us. We can make time for you, man. Shit. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. So Absolutely. That backstory is real, by the way. I think I yeah. know which one you're referring to. That's a real backstory. Yeah? Yeah. The chapter 13 bankruptcy and all that. Yep. That's real. <laughs> it sucks. Oof. It's rough. That all happened during a divorce, at the very, very beginning of divorce, and went into you know a really rough custody battle. And yep. if you guys have been following me on my Instagram, my personal life, you guys know how much I love my kids. Like <laughs> I will end this world for my kids. You guys understand? And yes, sir. So when that, when that custody battle happened, I was like, Ooh. So anyway, um, so Ryan's referring to a story that I posted in the 3d printing side hustle group. So if you guys want to go check that out, it's, it's in there. Um, I just talk about my background, what I did, um, and what happened to me before, Nico Industries and before Preacher Create and before all of this happened. Um, so yeah. Anyway, this I'm is not far, about this is not away, about man. me. This is not about <laughs> my story. If you guys want, um, if you guys want to hear Nico's story, comment down below and let me know. And what we'll we'll maybe do a Zoom or we'll do a, a giant Q and A, and I can tell you guys my story. All right. So, but today's episode is about Ryan. So Ryan is is um tell me about the business, man. Is it still um, a side hustle for you or is it full-time now? So it is still side hustle. Um, I have two kids, so I'm gauging the stepping off point from side hustle to full-time. Um, and that, that's kind of my, my biggest jump right now is, is finding that right time to say, all right, we're going to go for it. 100%. It's so scary. It's, terrifying and, and <laughs> you know in, in this in this industry it's so it, it can be hit or miss because everything is what's your niche specifically are, are you going to make you know those I love them I've never made one but I love them the little um articulating like dragons and creatures and things like that that people sell boom yeah, I did. It's, I saw your email. The not other a day, shameless man. plug. I swear to God, it, it is a shameless plug. I had it ready right here next to my mouse. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Listen, but I so show like, I can do what me, I want. For me, oh, you want to talk about uh, seamless plugs? You know, for me, I do a lot of. Uh, that is nice. Uh, yeah, man. This Dude, is, Red uh, Hood is, it sells so, so well. Red Hood is one of my, I'm a big bat family nerd um but yeah man it's the jumping off point for me is we're nearing it we're nearing it so fingers crossed yeah man so all right so it's still a side hustle yeah um but it's since since you're nearing the the full-time point <clears throat> mm -hmm. um how much is the business making a month now so roughly a month, we're making about three thousand. 
pretty good, man. Yeah. Almost there. <laughs> Almost there. And um, you, what is it that you sell exactly? Are you in the prop industry as well? Yeah. So I do props. I do cosplays. Um, like right now, I'm actually working on a Soldier Boy project for somebody. Um, so I'll do the helmet, the shield, uh, the chest plated armor, um, and some other things that don't involve 3D printing, but, you know, like the sewing of the vest and that kind of stuff. So my niche is, is mainly cosplay, wearable pieces, helmets, that kind of thing. Um, but I do love doing little props. Right now I'm working on a uh, Evil Dead dagger that uh, somebody had commissioned. So that's kind of my area of what gets me excited and, and you know, what I can pour my time and heart into and, and come out feeling, yeah, this is it. Yeah, it's the last interview I, I talked to um, had said, you got to love what you do. You got to love it. Cause, cause if you don't, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't feel good, man. Right. right. It's, you're already working at your day job. You already hate that. Why would you start a side hustle? You hate too. Exactly. Right. It just doesn't make sense. Right. You got to at least like your side hustle. Holy crap. Exactly. And, and I feel like that is something that a lot of people kind of jump into, you know, they'll, they'll pull it in as a hobby and they'll say, all right, this is what is, this is what I want to do. And then they go for it. And it turns out to be, all right, this is a little bit too much, or I'm not interested in making this and, you know, that kind of situation. So I was cosplaying before I started 3D printing. And so that's how I knew, regardless of how I do it, how it's done, I love it. It's what I want to do. And eventually try to work my way up in the ladder. Good stuff, man. Um, <clears throat> so what was your first machine? Let's go back to the business here. Um, mm -hmm. What was your first machine? Where did it all start? So my first 3D printer was the Ender 3 Pro. Tell me more about how that happened, man. Like, how'd you get into it? Uh, I have a buddy who is also in prop making and that kind of situation. And he had purchased one probably six months prior. I was working with the EVA foam and that kind of stuff. And I saw what 3D printers could do and for the price that you can get them at. And I looked at it and I was like, wow, that's, I got to get my hands on one of those things. Like that's game changing. It is. And so I, one day on a whim, really, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to make the investment. And, and, and how much was the investment? Oh, I think I got the Ender 3 Pro, if I remember correctly, 170, I believe. $170. Bro, you just turned $170 into $3,000 a month. Yes, sir. I, I hope you understand the magnitude and the the scale of how impressive what you just did is. All right, so be proud of that, man. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I don't take it for granted either. Great. Okay, just gratefulness is a a hidden um. I wouldn't say skill, but being grateful is one of those things that a lot of us who are in business, we we're very grateful for what we have. And I feel like that's something that a lot of people, once you become more grateful for what you have, a lot more open. I know that sounds super woo-woo. And like, <laughs> I, I get it. I understand. And my wife will probably be just, she's clapping right now because I hate woo-woo stuff. But let's be honest here. You guys, being grateful opens up so much more in your world. I promise. Call it Absolutely. what you want. But damn it, you guys, it works. Be grateful. Okay. Back to Absolutely. You. Back to the show. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, I want a little tangent on there. Um, so you got the Ender 3 Pro for $170. And right. So how did you get your first clients and your first customers? Because you've been in the cosplay game, right, for a while already. And, right. you know, I'm, I'm not going to ask you how you got into it. But how did you get your first initial customers? Friends, honestly. I, I just reached out and I was like, you know, I got this. 3d printer now so if you're 
looking to have something made, just let me know and, you know, we'll work something out. And it kind of just took off from there. That's, that's a, a very, very common story of people that are on the show. They yeah. just, they just, they, I told friends and family and boom, it's there. Yeah. One, I mean, it got to the point, you know, I told you how much I make a month and it got to the point where I was doing it just slow side hustling and it got to the point where I needed a tax ID number. So. Yeah. It happens quick. <laughs> yeah. It happens quick. Cause you know, like it's a side hustle. It's just, you know, cash in there. It's beer money. You know, it's date night money, whatever. Right. Um, next thing you know, you're like, all right, I'm, I'm getting too big for my own good and someone's going to notice you know, mm -hmm. so. yeah, exactly. Okay. So are, are you selling these on, on Etsy or, or your own website? So right now I'm purely off of Instagram and TikTok. Um, I'm no currently kidding. Yeah. I'm currently developing a website um, for my company house of cause. Um, so that's I currently love that underway. Name. Great brand. I appreciate it. My wife actually came up with that one. Good for her. We're, we were sitting there and, you know, I was like, I have to name this. I have to. It was a great and, show on Netflix, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> um, I definitely, you know, it comes back to gratefulness. I wouldn't have come up with it without her, but yeah, back to, back to the show. Like you say, you know, it, it really just kind of developed off of Instagram and TikTok, And I got to a point where now after taking your blender course, which shout out to you, by the way, I started developing my own files and I realized at that point, okay, I have to have somewhere to sell these. And so now we're in the works for our own website. Good stuff, man. So you're designing your own files and your own custom, custom stuff now. What are you designing? Correct. So at the this very moment, I'm working on a couple bat family things. I'm working on a bat cowl. And then I'm actually working on um, a custom, like custom domino mask for the Bat Kids, um, for Nightwing, for Red Hood, um, Batgirl, that kind of stuff. Because I found that they're the most challenging for me to do. Um, and I, I just kind of, I, that drives me. And so it's really just one of those things where it's like, if I didn't get it tonight, I, I'm foolish. I will delete everything. And I'll start over, and that way everything, I did that I, everything that I do is repetitive. Repetition. Exactly, exactly. So every day I get a little bit quicker and a little bit better at it. And, yeah. You know, we'll we'll get there. But yeah, man, I'm excited for this lineup to drop and you know get these things on the printers and get them out to the world. And yeah, man, it's it's exciting. This will be these will actually be some of my first. Um, I, I guess props or cosplays or files that I put out into the world. So I'm excited to release them. Good job, man. Congratulations. I appreciate it. Thank you, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. I mean, designing stuff is fun, right? So for you to go from in your head mm -hmm. to the screen to the machine to in your hand. Correct. Right? You guys... When I, I couldn't imagine having one of these when I was a kid, like have, if I would have had this when I was eight or ten, oh my god, oh, lost it. I would have, man, would have lost it. Absolutely gone, gone, it, gone. And to think that for me, it all started with a little mushroom. Oh yes, that mushroom, mm -hmm. the mushroom, the mushroom and the tree stump. <laughs> exactly. That's where it all started. I knew it too. I was like, wow, I, re I really want to get into this. And you know, I, I had seen your work and I saw that you offered these webinars and I was like, this is where I start. This is, you know. I've, I've seen people message me the, their, their tree stumps. People have messaged me, like, look what I made. And they actually printed their tree stump and they're like, look. And I was like, yeah, fucking awesome. It, it really is. Guys, everybody that's watching this, next time this man has a webinar, join it it will change the path that you take <laughs> forever much, man crack me i up. mean it's it's really it's special man what you do is special i appreciate it man thank you thank you absolutely um, so how, 
when you you got your first initial wave of people, right? People started coming right. in. You got your 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 business going. Um, what happened next? Like, how did you grow? Did you start buying more machines? Did you start putting money into marketing? How did the business grow to where it is now? So, from where I started to now, um, from the Ender Three Pro, I invested in a larger printer, um, and then I kind of what just printer was started that? Uh, CR Ten. That was my guess. CR10. And then from there, I upgraded again to the Sunlu S8 Pro, which mm. is slightly mm -hmm. bigger. Um, it's actually my favorite printer. Really? And Oh, actually, yeah. It's weird. It just, I don't know if I just kind of critiqued it a little more because over time, you know, you really just start to develop and get an eye for your printers. And, but I mean, that thing almost right off the bat, if, if I wasn't a perfectionist with my products and my 3D prints and to a normal person, if you're putting it on your shelf, it comes out stunning. I mean, it, it's incredible what that machine does. But um, yeah, from there, I just kind of started as those commissions were coming in, posting and, and just kind of being like, if you know anybody, you know, word of mouth is, is key and it's the biggest. Absolutely. And even just like, for example, currently house of cause is sponsored by 3d max filament. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Yeah. We're getting ready to print the Mark two Iron Man suit. Okay. So we're, we're working on that now and you know, it, it's, it's crazy. It's just, wow it's talking so surreal, about it out right? loud is like super surreal because you start like a, you start from the tiny printer you know it's i think it's 220 by 220 and we're here i mean i have resin printers and things like that as well and you make me reminisce back to when i had it like when i started i was like oh shit yeah i, I started yeah. i started with the cr10 and next thing i know you know it's a multi six-figure operation and you're like what the hell is going on exactly yeah and right now I mean, it happens we, quick we have i had to take the printer out of my bedroom and move it into our spare bedroom and then from there the spare bedroom became the workshop and now you're in the garage ah i wish i'm i'm trying to buy a house right now to get a garage <laughs> oh, okay okay dude yeah hey congratulations man i, I, I hope you find it. that house dude if you can get a house in the basement even better yeah, well, we we talked about moving out of Florida. We talked about it. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's hot. <laughs> it's it's not good one for your fourteen PLA, here right now. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Cal uh, Sacramento is in the middle of a heat wave, and it doesn't wow. end until until you know, three more days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, it's rough. Um, good luck. <laughs> so, where are we at now as far as print farm goes? Like, how many machines do you have now? So right now, I actually only have four machines. You're and running is, this business on four machines? I am. How efficient are you? It is nonstop. Wow. I get home okay, from so my Okay, so your machines time, must be calibrated to the T. They move quick and well. <laughs> yeah, because you, there's no way you'd produce this much on four machines unless your, your, your printer's are oh yeah rated and they hardly fail oh uh, they actually i haven't had a fail in a few months and uh i'm constantly tweaking i'm constantly you know i will give one a break if i start to slow down a little bit usually towards the middle of the month because everybody's kind of catching up on bills and that kind of stuff uh i just replaced on my thumb though i just replaced the spring just because i knew Hey, this is when I was leveling my bed. I was like, this is, you know, not right. They're, they're a little too loose. So I automatically replace them and I just quick turnover. Maintenance is key. I agree. I agree. Um, and so you're sponsored by who again? 3D Max Filament. Let's give some, uh, let's give 3D Max uh, Filament some love on the show. So we'll, we'll be. Sure to link that <laughs> in the description below. Did you see that sucker just jump by itself? Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, so what struggles did you have when you first started? Oh, it, that's uh, a lot. 
when I first started <laughs> a lot. Um, so before buying on a whim, I did do like two, three months of research, but you just don't know until you have your hands on it. And I mean, whether it was leveling the bed and I always, I, I used to argue with people, you know, my bed is level, my bed is level. And sure as heck, I re-leveled it one more time and, you know, off to the races it would go. And it was really just learning each machine individually instead yes. of thinking, hey, these printers are the same printer. You have to look at it. Okay, it's like looking at your kids. Yeah, they came from the same people or, you know, yeah, they both share my blood, but they're different. And that's the way I have to look at my printers because I could have two of the same and they're going to act completely well, different. They have personalities, these guys. Oh, yeah. You got to give them names. Mm -hmm. Like Dave Harold, <laughs> Jennifer, right? <laughs> you got to give them names, man. Exactly. Like, this one doesn't like carrots. You know, just, I'm kidding. Oh, no. Actually, listen, some printers, that's another thing. Finding the right PLA. I'm a big PLA plus user, as most people are. One printer might work phenomenally with that PLA at a certain temperature. The other one might just blob up. This guy right here does not like silk. Ooh. Everyone else likes silk filament, except this guy. Yep. Drives me nuts. We'll take any other filament. Right. Prints, um, prints TPU phenomenally. Give it silk, it. Mm -hmm. What? And I've actually I struggled Ungrateful. with silk a lot. I think it was Overture that I had used at that at that time, and I struggled with it to really Overture, calibrate I love it. Love Overture. I used them a lot, and I did this review on House of Cause, a um, couple reviews where I tested different filaments, and you know which ones worked best with my printers, which ones I liked the most, whether you know. I, and I rated them from, you know, easy use out of box and that kind of thing. And silk has always been an enemy of mine. So, I love silk. That's all I print with. Um, that <laughs> A plus. I mean, it helps that I have two silk lines under, you know, my brand. So, um, so let's talk about your marketing here a little bit, man. You said you do TikTok and Instagram. Can Correct. you give us some tips on how to grow? the instagram and, and our tiktok account because i dude i can't tiktok for anything bro i i i don't know if i'm just an idiot i just can't figure out tiktok but you know <laughs> yeah so, so give me some tips on instagram and tiktok man for tiktok it's consistency come up with a schedule that fits you the best and just make sure you post give some give people something to expect you know hey it's Friday to three o'clock. Oh, I think Nico dropped a new, a new video. Let me so it's go like look. YouTube. Correct. And uh, it, it's really just TikTok can be finicky at times. Just stick with it. You know, there might be times where you get met, like much less views. Keep it short. Attention is very, very quick on that app. People are very quick to scroll. So keep it short. Keep it interesting. Like that Iron Man. 15 seconds of that Iron Man just jiggling. Oh, instant hit. Instant hit. Just jiggle it. See? Listen, there is an audio on TikTok, and it is one of my favorite. And it's just, you know, my money don't jiggle, jiggle, it folds. Oh my God. If you, you did that, if you do that with that Iron Man, bro, you're all right. Set you on know TikTok. what? I'm going to do that. We're not, we're not going to do it right now, not live on the show. <laughs> But I'm going to take them, I'm going to jiggle them, and then I'm going to tag House of Cause on TikTok. Do You're going to find it via Creature Crate, and we're about to find out how, how this goes. Now, how, how often should you be posting? Should you do like three videos a day, five? What, what is the magic number there? So there really is no magic number. I usually post once or twice a week, and they're usually really, short. Really, that's it? That's it. Yeah. 
And uh, a lot of the times I, I look, you know, I, House of Cause is still rather small on TikTok. I only have, I believe, a little over 530 followers on TikTok for House of Cause. Um, but each video is getting, you know, six, seven, eight hundred views every time. So every time I post, I grow a little bit more and more, which in turn eventually brings in more people. I so see. it's very, um, and it's better to build slow than to have these one-off millions of views types of things. I had a video that I posted on my cosplay channel, a 3D printed bat cowl. I have a cat. Her name is Oracle for Batgirl. I printed one her size, slid it on her head. I think it was like two, two point something million views, like half a million likes. It was 15 seconds of my cat in a 3D printed bat cowl. That's it. That's it. That That's... is it. Well, Tony Stark has money and his money don't jiggle jiggle. It folds. It folds. <laughs> and, and he wiggle wiggle for sure. There so, you go. I'm all right. I'll take you up on that. I'm about to do that. Yeah, um, man. So what, what as, as as far as hashtags go, do you use those? Like what, what do you put to, to get found? So I mainly use hashtags on Instagram. So we'll slide over there. Um, with hashtags, be very specific to what you do so that you can bring in people that are interested in what you do. So for example, if you're doing 3D rendering, you want to throw in hashtag 3D, hashtag rendering, hashtag uh, blender, hashtag, you know, Nico Industries. And that way, when somebody looks you up, that hashtag over time, the more views you get, the more it boosts that hashtag. So it's easier for people to come across and, you know, your posts start moving up the explore page pretty much. So it's definitely very specific based. So I do, you know, hashtag cosplay, hashtag creality, hashtag uh, Sunlu, all that just to find people with like hobbies to interact with. I found your um, webinars through hashtags. What? For real? Yeah. On Facebook. No kidding. Mm hmm. Huh. Interesting. And I found it. I found it the first time right on time. I think it was the night of or like two nights before that I had signed up for it. And I had found it right on time. Yeah. Very interesting. Cool, yeah. man. All right. So that's how you guys use Instagram and TikTok to grow your business. All right. So hope you guys have been paying attention. A lot of people <laughs> like I've been looking at my stats and people are like, oh, they click off at like 13 minutes, right? 12, 11. Right. And it's like, you guys, a, a lot of the good stuff happens towards the end. So watch the right. entire episode. Um, I don't know why I'm telling him in this part of the episode, but I should, probably should have told him in the beginning. You're still anyway. here. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you guys are still here. <laughs> so now that you know how to design stuff, right? Are you now <laughs> offering design services? Um, yes and no. So I am not wildly confident in Fair enough. if somebody were to come to me and be like, I want this piece custom made. I am not confident enough in myself to guarantee that where something is on the line as far as their money, as far as my company name, that kind of thing. So I haven't yet, uh, I, have a, I have a designer who uses Blender and Rhino and that kind of stuff to take on the more difficult tasks as I learn. Good. Yeah. But you are learning and you're taking your stuff and you're, you're putting it out, right? Yep. Beautiful, man. Um, so are, are, do you have, you, you said you have your own website and Etsy, correct? No, I'm actually, I don't do Etsy. I heard horrible things about Etsy. <laughs> horrible things about Etsy. We are currently developing a website and that should be out at the end of this month, actually. Beautiful. So how are you taking orders currently? Just. So currently I actually have like written up contracts and that such. And, um, people will just DM me, we'll discuss and, you know, Hey, let me get your email. And I'll send you over a contract, read it over, and we'll go from there. And 
you know, right now my my main focus is building that clientele a little bit more and then fully I'm very personable. I like to have a relationship with people. I don't want it to be where this large, you know, enterprise or corporation style type of thing. I do like to be, hey, you can find me here and I'll talk to you. You know, that that that's very I feel like that has helped me a lot in my growth is being available to speak to people. I have messaged you in the past and you were very responsive. That has led me to purchase more of your files. That I try to be. Me. I don't get to everybody, but yeah, you know, I try shit. I try to be. Listen, it's if you want to grow your business, talk. Talk to people. That is something that has helped me tremendously. Be honest with people. If there are deadlines that you might not make, especially like in my field where I'm I'm 3D printing full suits, update talk to people people understand if you guys invest in the 3d printer you're going to learn right off the bat you know as you had mentioned earlier things are not going to be calibrated properly sometimes and things are going to go down mm -hmm. so it's really just communication is key but yeah our website will be up at the end of this month sweet dude so how are you driving traffic to that website how do you plan on driving traffic to that Instagram and TikTok. Instagram and TikTok. So you're mainly good. So your your main source of traffic is via Instagram and TikTok, and you funnel them in that way. Correct. Cool, man. That, that, Instagram and TikTok are just those. I have never been able to figure them out. They're, they're like <laughs> kryptonite, dude. I cannot figure them out. And I'm always on those. You know what? It's because I just I use them to browse, right? To like relax. I use YouTube and Facebook as my main, you know, right. sources of traffic. But Instagram and TikTok, I just I do a lot of conspiracy videos on TikTok. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Yo, you blink and 30 minutes have gone by and you're like, oh my God, this world is used to be populated by giants. And you're like, okay, I need to stop. Yeah, but social media is key. Look, that that niche of TikTok just pulled you in for 30 minutes. There's no reason why if you post that Iron Man Jiggle Jiggle video that somebody somewhere it will not go down and look at the rest of your video. I'm about to start do doing it. that for all my toys, dude. All right, listen, it's going to work. And people are going to expect it. Oh, does he Does he have a new model to jiggle around? Hell it's yeah, I'm about thing. to jiggle the hell out of these toys. I got a whole box of toys I need to jiggle over there. That's a great... <laughs> but I'm about to jiggle the hell out of these toys. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's it for me, man. Um... Let's wrap this up with your number one tip for anyone who wants to start their own 3D printing business. Oh, really? My, my number one thing is communication, man. Talk to people. That's going to, if you want to make this a business, whether you're talking like this or it's face to face, communication is going to be key. 100%. Word of mouth is your number one tool for growth. There you go. Dude, Ryan, thank you so much for being here, man. I really, really appreciate it. And I know you're a busy Absolutely. man trying to grow your business, two kids, <laughs> all that stuff. So thank you for being here. I appreciate it. I'm going to check up Absolutely. on you in about a year or so, see how the business is going. Beautiful. And that's how, how it's grown. All right. Again, Ryan, thanks for being here. If you guys want to uh, see more episodes like this, make sure you guys tune in Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. Pacific time for videos like this. And I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Take care.